Well, hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and today we're going to make the last in the holiday scene week videos, an iceberg. Another of my art impressions images has these cute little penguins, and there's actually two stamps involved in this. There's the stamp at the bottom with three penguins, and then the trio at the top is another group of three penguins. And what I did was mask out the ones at the bottom and stamp the ones at the top right behind it. So it was really only two stampings that had to happen for this one to come together, which was kind of fun. And I thought the shape of the six penguins formed a kind of a Christmas tree with this one little guy at the top holding a star. And that was kind of fun. And then I added at the end, you'll see adding the scene around them. I'm using watercolor pencils. And there are three watercolor pencil videos today. And I want you to know about that. You'll get links to them over on my blog if you want to see the other ones, because this is the only one on my channel. But the watercolor pencil is something that I've got a brand new class with at art-classes.com. And I know there's lots of people who are now going to be showing love to their watercolor pencils that have been sitting there collecting dust. And that's why I thought a whole day full of watercolor pencil ideas would be helpful now that I've inspired everybody to get them out. The image is stamped, by the way, onto Arches cold press watercolor paper with VersaFine Onyx Black ink. I find that with watercolor, I can use my Lawn Fawn Jet Black with watercolor and Copic, which is one of the reasons I like that ink. But there's sometimes when I have a detailed image like this that I just can't get a really solid impression without stamping it a thousand times with the uh, Lawn Fawn ink. But if I use my VersaFine Onyx Black, I can tend to get a better image quicker and sooner and all that good stuff. And sometimes when you're making 250 Christmas cards, uh, getting things done quicker and sooner is a good idea. So yeah, there we go. I'm doing something similar with this card that I did the other day when I colored a whole bunch of ice skating penguins, which is keeping the coloration the same for most of the penguins. The image, I wanted to tie it together in some way. You could do that with green as well to make this feel more like a Christmas tree, but I wanted to keep the colors limited in the center and then add some kind of blue colors to the background for the scene that I'm going to do. I did add a pop of yellow here and there because, you know, yellow is a thing. It's only the best color in the universe. So I did add some of that, but most of the detail in here is in the red. And that's going to help to unify the image so that it doesn't get too confusing. It's already very confusing because there's so many penguins. There's just a ton of them in here. So the less complicated you can make it, the better off you might be when you've got a, a complex image like this. So I'm running around with my brush doing the same color all at the same time. I, I jump from one color to another, rinsing in between so I don't drag color from one thing to the other. And now I'm going to draw in my, my little land glaciers that are going to be the source of the iceberg that they are floating on. And I'm going to create just a lumpy shape at the top and at the bottom here, I can create a horizontal line that I can consider the base of that landmass. But then I can also start breaking up that horizontal line so it's not just a flat line and bring in the water a little bit so that it looks like I have two lumps of glacier out there in the distance rather than just one piece. So if you're creating something like that, make sure you consider the idea at least of not having just a flat straight line out there. And Mother Nature doesn't always have a flat straight line. Depends on what angle you're looking at it, etc. If you're looking at glacier pictures. But I've filled in my water, filled in my sky a bit. And uh, wanted to create something where I had enough color in the background that the foreground they're standing on is going to look like an iceberg because it's floating. It's got water in between them and the land. And creating the, the top of that iceberg so that it's low enough 
to the bottom of the image without being all the way at their feet. I didn't want them, if you put the edge of the iceberg all the way down at their toes, it's going to look like they're going to fall off the edge. So I gave them a little bit higher so there's room in the background for them not to fall off of their little iceberg. So I'm going to paint the sky in, of course, being careful to go around that little yellow star. If you're worried about your images and, you know, am I going to ruin something if I put the background in, you can always do the background first because if you're doing something, especially with light colors like this, it'll be real easy to accidentally grab some of that red and pull it into the sky. But if you did your sky first, then there wouldn't be any danger of that. So I've, when I painted with the water, a lot of my color disappeared. I scribbled onto a scratch piece of watercolor paper to use that as a palette to bring in more color and make them look like clouds. So this is one way you can make something look like a cloudy sky in the distance. And then jump back to just using my brush to start spreading out some of the shadows underneath of my little penguins. And then it's time to work on the water a bit. Notice the color difference between the water and the sky. I put not only a slightly darker color mixed in with my my same shade that I used for the water, but I also used a higher quantity of pigment in the water. You can get both differences with the same watercolor pencils. Just put more quantity of pigment down and you'll get a darker color overall rather than getting something really pale and not having any options with it. It's one of the things I like about watercolor pencil is that there are all kinds of options for getting different colors from the same products in a more controlled way than you can with other things. You can always, of course, put more pigment when you're watercoloring, but here you get more control because it's a pencil and we're very used to writing and drawing, <clears throat> excuse me, with a pencil type of object. So many people will find watercolor pencils just easier to handle than watercolor. So to put a little bit of texture into my glaciers up here. I'm using the pigment from the water and picking up a little bit of that with my brush and getting a little dry brush action going up there in the glaciers. And I'm not putting a whole lot of effort into making it really a, a careful type of shading, but I'm just adding a little bit enough to give it a little bit of color. Once that was dry, I went back in with a pencil and it's the same color pencil that I used for the water and I'm doing some tone on tone texture work and this is putting in some waves so I get some wave action in the water without getting a whole lot of contrast throughout the whole thing. I want to add some pops of contrast in a few minutes but for right now I just want the, the water portion to feel like there's water moving and that's really just adding some wavy lines in there here and there. Uh, not really working too much at trying to make specific waves out of everything because it's a background element. The, the foreground image with all these penguins, that's the important part. So this is Nouveau Drops, which are kind of a dimensional little paint pigment. And I decided to use a contrasting color, this bright crazy green, because that will stand out where some other things might not. And now for some other details. That I wanted to add. I was debating how strong to go with my outlines on the mountain, but I did want to add more to the little iceberg that they're floating on and the bottoms of the glacier, so I used a black pencil to do that. And the pencil is going to allow me some options. If I don't like the line, I can go back in with a water brush and soften it. And I decided not to, but if you use the pen, you wouldn't have that option. And then I went in with the blue pencil to add a little bit more to the mountains and just a few lines here and there so that those glaciers stand out but not too heavily so that they don't steal attention. My finishing of the card was to put a black layer and then pop the, that with the penguin layer onto a card base with some dimensional adhesive. If this was not enough watercolor pencil for you, then hop on over to MFT's channel to get a bunny with a penguin all in one video. And over on Ellen Hudson's channel, we have some abominable snowmen, 
who are decorating an ice cave. So both of these are available today. You can go check them out. I will add links to them as soon as I have links available to me. And if you'd like to catch up on any of these videos from the week, there are links in the doobly-doo and over on my blog to everything. And I will see you again next week. I'm exhausted. My voice is giving out. So I'm going to go now. You guys have a great weekend. Get a lot of card making done. And I'll see you again next week.